I remember many years ago starting my coaching practice and I remember going to school to get trained as a hypnotherapist and coach. And I remember that my colleagues also in their dreams, we all had such positive expectation while we were getting trained and now teaching coaches for the last four or five years. And if there's anything I have learned is that not all people who set out to be coaches become successful coaches. I've seen so many of my colleagues start with these great expectations and these beautiful dreams only to have their businesses stagnate. They lose their passion and drive. And then so many of them go back to a J-O-B, a job, just over broke, feeling defeated and feeling like they have to sell their soul um, to their employer rather than really being able to make an impact on the world that they wanted when they started out as coaches. So why is that? Is it because they weren't smart enough or good enough, not credentialed enough, didn't work hard enough? No, it has nothing to do with that. And I think some of them maybe thought like, oh, well, you know, I have a PhD in neuroscience and maybe they thought, well, they don't have a PhD or maybe they don't have like a lot of letters behind their name. And what I can tell you is is that is not the reason. It is not the reason at all. And that even when somebody did have a lot of letters behind their name, those credentials are not what makes a successful coach. Invariably, it comes down to one of three reasons. One of these things was missing for each of my friends that were not successful and ended up quitting their coaching practice and went back into doing something else that was not what they had dreamed of when they were in school. And all three of these reasons are what the successful coaches have done. And I've seen many successful coaches as well, some of which I have as my mentors and some of which I have as my colleagues. And also I put myself in that category as a successful coach. I have been in practice in business as a coach for over 20 years now and have been able to make a very decent living at that. And I'm very excited about what I'm able to do. Why I've been able to do it is I've followed these rules. The first one is get coached. It's really important to get coaching and be coachable. You want to be able to take your own advice, but you also want to be able to receive the advice of others. And so if you are coaching someone else, then you want to recognize that you also need to be coached, right? You've got to recognize the value and what you're offering them is also a value to you. And so right away, I would encourage you to not only be a coach, but also get coached and be coachable. Treat yourself sometimes like a client and coach yourself and recognize that you don't have all the answers, just like you recognize that you don't have all the answers with your clients. You're not going to have all the answers for yourself either. And A good coach can help you find those. So first secret is get coached and be coachable. The second is heal yourself first. I can't tell you how many coaches are out there that are just pushing their own emotional baggage underneath the rug and not addressing it. They're not getting their own healing. They might suggest healing for somebody else. They might see for someone else how they're getting triggered or that other person is reactive or how they're not taking responsibility or they're being a victim or whatever it is that you might see out there for your client. You have to heal for yourself first. If you aren't at least a few steps ahead of your client, you're not going to find that you are successful. So heal yourself first and fill up your own cup. Take care of your own needs. Make sure you are full, taken care of, satisfied, so that you can be a clear channel to support your clients. If you haven't healed yourself, then you're going to find that you have congestion, you have baggage, you have, you just won't be able to be fully present with your client stuff. So number two secret to highly successful coaches is they heal themselves first and they fill up their own cup. So what is number three? Well, number three is really important too. And I can't tell you how many coaches I've seen that just don't 
keep this up? And they'll look at me and they go, oh my God, you're so successful. Why are you so successful? You must be so smart. It's not so much that I'm so smart. It's not so much that I am so credentialed. It's that I continue to sharpen my saw. What does that mean? Well, what that means is, is I continue to try to get better all the time. I never expect that I know all there is to know. I don't care how much education that I have. I know that there is more to learn. And so I'm always in student mode, just as I'm often in client mode, so that I am constantly learning from the world. And I take courses to learn from those who are ahead of me. And I use all of that information to support, one, my own healing, my own ability to get out and do my business, but also to support my clients. So I think this sharpening the saw is a really important and third secret of highly successful coaches in every single highly successful coach that I have seen consistently, continually educates themselves on whatever is coming up new, whatever they don't know, wherever they have challenges, but also sometimes in in what they're already good at to sort of see what else is out there that's being created from others. So all three of these secrets are critical to success. And all three of these secrets are present for every single successful coach I've ever seen, especially for those who make it really big. So the first one, get coached and be coachable. The second one, heal yourself first and fill up your own cup before you try to heal someone else. And the third one is sharpen the saw, continue to learn and grow, continue to be a student of the world because the best gurus know that they have more to learn and then therefore they have more to share. So go ahead and look inward. What are you doing? What are you not? Have you already been pursuing these three secrets? And if not, what can you do to put them in place so that you can have the successful coaching practice that you desire so that you can make the impact on the world that you desire to make so that you can really support your people, the people that are waiting for you. Thanks so much. Go out, heal the world.